Hello and welcome to YouTube's most comprehensive and visually gorgeous ship tour of Viking's brand new Viking Venus. As we take a look around this enchanting vessel soaked in Nordic DNA, we will ask ourselves, is this one of the most captivating ships on the oceans? In fact, is this and all the other Viking ocean ships destined to become all-time design classics? Well, we can only answer that question by having a good look around, so please join us and prepare to be amazed and suitably impressed by the level of thought and detail that's gone into this ship. If you are new to visit with us, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel because we have a whole heap of brand new videos coming thick and fast for you to enjoy. Oh, and we're pretty certain you'll like the older stuff too. Thank you. OK, let's get started. We're going to do this deck by deck and Viking don't go for fancy deck names. They are named simply decks 1 to 9. And why not? Let's start on deck 1. We're going to start right in the heart of the ship, in the three-storey atrium. This beautiful and reassuringly expensive Steinway piano sits at the bottom of one of the most striking and powerful looking staircases we've ever seen on a ship. So grand and robust are they, you really think you're approaching the throne of Odin himself. But instead, sorry Odin, you'll be relieved to be faced with a huge dazzling LED screen with ever-changing images by photographer Alastair Miller of Viking's Nordic heritage and images of Edvard Munch's classic works of art, which are featured throughout the ship. It also displays images of the locations of the ports you are currently in. Can you guess where we are here? Answers in the comments below, please. Deck 1 stretches out into the Viking living room where there is a bar and plenty of comfy seating to while away those lazy sea days or to enjoy a pre-dinner drink or two. As with most of the ship, this area has a multitude of Viking artefacts on display that really set the scene and flavour for the interior of the ship. There's lots of lovely little touches and even places to charge your gadgets as you relax. Moving further forward on deck one, there is a small shop and a salon before we come to the fitness centre. The gym is very spacious and full of modern equipment and a decent size for a ship that holds only 930 guests. One of the defining features of any Viking ocean ship is the Nordic Spa which is free to use for all guests. Literally all of the Sons of Ragnar would fit into this huge wellness pool. They probably enjoyed a spa sesh or two back in the day, although it's not completely clear how many Sons Ragnar actually had. And they would have probably boiled their enemies in this very hot spa pool in the corner. Seriously though, this is the best spa we've ever seen on a ship. There's even a snow grotto where it actually snows. A tipping ice bucket and a steam room. The traditional Nordic spa experience is all about hot and cold. We put this holistic regime to the test in our vlog, so please check it out. The changing area is also very large and plush and includes traditional Nordic bathing experiences, a sauna to heat you up and an ice cold plunge pool, of which I do get into up to my neck in the vlog, so seeing me suffer is definitely something to look forward to. Let's go to the back of the ship now where there is three restaurants. Manfredi's Italian restaurant is a speciality dining venue that specialises in, you guessed it, the clues in the name, Italian food and is named after the founder of Silver Sea Cruises, Manfredi Lefevre, because he and the founder and chairman of Viking, Torsten Hagen, are good friends. There is a reciprocal venue on Silver Sea ships called Tours Observatory. 
All of the speciality dining rooms on board are complimentary, but you do have to book because space is limited. Opposite Manfredi's is the Chef's Table, which is a fine dining venue that has different tasting menus which rotate during the voyage for all you gastronomes out there. On our voyage we had Asian, English and Californian cuisine, and if you watch our complete dining guide, you'll see all of those menus in all their gorgeous, delicious 4K glory. In the middle of these two restaurants is the Kitchen Table, which is a small venue where Viking chefs give tutorials and cooking demonstrations. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, this was not operational on our voyage. There is a beautiful wooden staircase that takes you from deck one to deck two in the middle of these restaurants and up on deck two is THE restaurant, Viking's main dining venue. The main restaurant oozes Scandi elegance and has these beautiful panoramic surround windows letting in a ton of natural light and of course those mesmerising ocean views. Let's leave the restaurant now and go back into the atrium where there are some rather fun interactive game tables and a small area exhibiting some Viking historic artefacts. Also on deck two in the atrium is the Future Crew sales office, in front of which is this intricate scale model of Viking Venus. Just behind the atrium is Torshaven, Viking's late night jazz club, where you can relax and listen to live music whilst drinking beautifully made cocktails until the early hours. We did that. It was good. <laughs> Very good. Moving further forward, there are a couple of shops, one that sells Nordic items and the other selling jewellery. Just in front of those is the theatre and cinemas. The theatre has its own bar and is a compact but very comfortable saloon-style arena to watch live music, entertainment, enrichment lectures and port talks throughout the day. Interestingly, Viking have managed to squeeze two cinemas into space that rather cleverly opens up as wing extensions to the theatre. Nice one, Viking. A great design touch. Also on deck two, there is something that is quite often ignored in new ship design. The whole of Asgard will be smiling down on this full wraparound promenade deck, which is utterly fabulous. Who doesn't love a stroll around the promenade deck on a sunny evening just after dinner? Most of Deck 3 is accommodation, but there are two slivers of seating flanking the atrium, one side which has some fascinating traditional Nordic costumes on display. Decks 3 through 6 are all accommodation. Every stateroom has a balcony and we'll be showing you around every class of stateroom in a separate video. There is lots to show you on Deck 7. We start right at the front of the ship in the Explorer's Lounge. This is a wonderful area flavoured with strong navigational themes with incredible panoramic windows that have a full 180 degree view out of the front of the ship. There is a bar here and at night the whole lounge transforms into something quite wonderful and celestial with star charts and constellations appearing before your very eyes. There is an external area at the front of the ship on this level which gives great outdoor views of the bow and is a brilliant place in warm weather to admire a sail in or sail out. Mm -hmm. 
The Explorer's lounges on two levels and the mezzanine on deck eight shares the same views from those huge forward-facing panoramic windows. Upstairs in the Explorer's lounge is a treasure trove of little details, ship models, artifacts and so many things of interest, you'll be up there all day just having a look at everything. It is a celebration of legendary nautical adventurers. It's also a great place to relax any time of the day with some tea and traditional cake from Mamsons or a crafty Nordic horn of ale from the bar. Note, for safety reasons, drinks are not served in horns, but that would have been really cool. Mamsons? What's that I hear you ask? Back downstairs on deck 7, along the side of the Explorer's Lounge, is a deli named after the Hagen family matriarch, where you can get various traditional Norwegian cuisine all through the day, beloved and hand-chosen by the Hagen family. It's so comfy in here, it became a favourite place for us to sample the delicious food on offer while relaxing in front of this gorgeous fireplace. This, of course, isn't a real fire, but the flames are actually made of steam. And what's the food like? All is revealed in the dining guide, but here's a teaser. The waffles, based on an old family recipe, served with berries and brunost, brown goat's cheese. I was utterly hooked. Let's walk to the middle of the ship, and here we will find the winter garden. This is a beautifully designed area where you can relax in harmonious surroundings that remind you of a veil of ancient trees and where you can enjoy a delicious afternoon tea every single day. We featured the afternoon tea in our dining guide, <laughs> but you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Down the sides of the winter garden are little areas called lanai, which in Hawaiian means porch or veranda. They are small pockets of relaxation and typical of the detail we find all over this ship. Not one inch of space is wasted or uninteresting. One of the highlights of the ship has to be the main pool area. It has a retractable roof, so whether Thor is raining down thunder or Freya is encouraging you to strip off to your swimwear, you'll never miss an opportunity to dip in the pool or relax in that gorgeously long and inviting warm hot tub. There are lots of seating areas in here to relax if you don't feel like sitting around the pool, and a large screen at one end that is used on voyages to play films in the style of an outdoor cinema. When the roof comes off, this place transforms and you could be lounging in a posh open-air resort under a beautiful Riviera sky. There's also a pool bar and a pool grill that serves some delicious lunches and has tables in the seating area a little further away from the pool. We ate here often. At the rear of the ship on deck 7 is the World Cafe, which is best described as an anytime dining buffet venue. <laughs> Don't be fooled by the word buffet and what it entails. Food here is seriously good and way above the standard buffet offerings. Can you believe we had Chateau Briand here one night? Chateau Briand? At a buffet? You want proof? It's in our dining gu- Oh, you know that already. At the back of the World Cafe is the Aquavit Bar and the Aquavit Terrace, which has outdoor seating for the World Cafe if you like your food al fresco. There's also sun lounges arranged around a hot tub and a great infinity pool, one of the first infinity pools at sea. This area looks great at night too. Mm -hmm. 
finally on deck 9 there is the sports deck. Not only are there lots of different deck games, but there is plenty of areas to sit and lounge and soak up the brilliant weather and another great place to watch a sail away. And that's the Viking Venus. We think it's definitely one of the most stylish ships we have ever travelled on, and we consider it to be a bit of a design classic. And what do you think? Is it style over substance? Well, we'll reveal all in our Voyage Vlog series, and you can see that right here in the links. We'll see you there! Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and give this video a thumbs up. And as the Vikings say, Skoll!